The Ready to Learn Learning Triangle is a teaching tool. It addresses various learning styles and engages different senses. This workshop is based on these principles, view, read, and do. We've been talking in previous workshops about how children develop and the areas that they develop in. And the areas, we're just going to recap what areas of development children learn, and that is our cognitive of our reasoning skills and also our language skills, also our social skills, what we think of other people, and emotional of what we think about ourselves. And in physical, it's how we move. It's our gross and our fine motor skills. And today we're going to talk about play and how play actually helps in every area of development. And so I want you to clear your minds just for a second and I want you to think about what word you would define play as. Rachel, what would you say play is? Fun. Fun. Okay, Aaron, what's fun? For, what's fun? What's play for you? Uh, movement, exercise, okay. you know, physical and mental. Okay. So moving around, thinking, okay, anything of a, of a mess? <laughs> yeah, you know, you go in and you see that mess. Well, I'm going to give you the definition of what child development specialists say play is, and that is a child's work. Now, I'm going to tell you a story that defines this um, kind of a definition of work. And one of my professors from Brigham Young University told us this story in a class. He said that as professors, they would go watch the children in the preschool where there was a two-way mirror, where the professors could watch the people that were going to be teachers and also the children playing. And one day he saw a group of five children and there was one little girl that was a little bossy. And so she told the rest of the kids, about four others, we're gonna play house. Now, as the boss bossy one, she became the mother, okay? So she assigned the roles and she had a mother, which was herself, a father, a brother, and a sister. And so they all took on their roles and they went into the playhouse. And as they went into this little house that had some toys, the brother started just playing with the trucks. And the sister found a little baby doll and pretended to be rocking it. And the dad went over to the dress up area and found a hat and put it on and walked out this imaginary line and said, goodbye, I'm going to work. And everyone turned around and said, goodbye, I love you. And they, the professor said they watched this little boy and he just stood there for about 30 seconds. Then he went back in, threw the hat down, and said, I want to be the dog. <laughs> now, some of us feel that way about our jobs. I love my job. But, you know, when you think about that, the little boy didn't come back. It was because he didn't know what the dad did. I remember several times my children asked me what I did and I think they thought that I just went out to lunch. I went to my office, I sat there, waited for lunch and then went out, where'd you go to lunch, mom? What'd you have for lunch? They didn't really know what I did and that was that particular little boy. He didn't probably know where his dad went, but he knew what the dog did, you know, so he was more comfortable doing that. And so when we talk about play, we do talk about that it is a child's work and that it gives children experiences and it helps them to learn. Now, um, as we talk about learning or work, we usually have some tools that we get from our jobs. You know, if you go to a particular job, you have some tools that help you with your work. And so we're gonna talk about some of the tools that children actually gain from their children's work. So let's talk about some tools. I just happened to bring some tools with me that will help us define what a child actually will gain from play. And as I bring these out, we're gonna talk about a couple of them. And I want you to think, hmm, how could that be with play? Responsibility. Um, Aaron, how would a child res um, learn responsibility when they're playing or with play? Well, I guess kind of using the example of playing house, you kind of know what you know, what parents do and what, how siblings are supposed to act and things like that, I guess. Okay. Have any of you ever broken a toy or found a toy that was not put away or maybe lost and a child has to learn responsibility from that, right? So different roles and how to treat maybe their property. Okay. Um, this is one of my, a good one. Discovery. 
Um, Rachel, how do, what would a child through play discover? Well, they figure out how things work. What um, I know my son decided to flush a dinosaur down the toilet, oh. and, <laughs> and we learned that that doesn't quite work the same way as when you use it properly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it helps you guys <laughs> too, right? <laughs> Be patient. <laughs> the tools of patience. Um, I remember I was with some children in a nursery and they had one of those shape balls. And just to see the little kids as they found the shape that would go and they would continually put that same shape over and over and over. And then I would try to give them another shape. And no, I like, I know that this one works. So um, let's see with our hard hat language development. How would children learn language from Rachel in the back from play? Um, well, a lot of the times they are making up situations. They're speaking, they're telling other people what they're going to do. <laughs> um, like in the house example, you know, like people will take on the roles and they actually speak the roles. They there's a lot of communication going on with, especially if they're playing together. Okay, I um, have any of you heard your children mimic you? <laughs> um, my granddaughter, um, uh, I have to brag a little bit, but, um, and this is her parents' generation, she would carry just anything around and put it right here instead of by her ear, but she would just walk around going, mm-hmm, 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 you know, and with her little phone, she would pretend with that, and language development. We've talked a lot about imagination in other workshops, but remember that children that imagine as children are good problem solvers as adults, and play is a a really perfect area for that, especially when you let your child do what we call free play. And that means that there's no rules that they get to pick what objects they're playing with. They get to go in and they set the rules and the boundaries. Free play and imagination. Um, just a couple others very quickly um, that we have self-expression. This is probably as a child gets older, something that they'll develop more and more. We don't call what we do as adults play. We call it our hobbies. We don't say, oh, we're going to go play. We say, oh, we are going to go garden or we're going to do this and that. Those become hobby, hobbies and they usually define who we are. Isn't that interesting? Is our personalities become part of our play or what we do as enjoyment. Um, the last one that I'm going to um, share with you, we do have a list of this on our participation notebook that you can find on the web, kbyu11.org. If you go there and go to the play um, topic, you'll see the list of things children actually gain from playing. But this one, um, I'll, I guess I'll start with this one. Let's not forget enjoyment. Um, life is to be enjoyed and we want children to learn that. The last one, and I always, I always say, let's put this on a hammer because it's a hard one to learn, is sharing. I think for parents, I like to uh, remind you and make you feel a little bit better um, that sharing is what we call a learned behavior. Most children don't come to this earth already wired to share. It's something that they have to acquire. You need to model it, which probably all of you model this, but they need to learn it. It comes very slowly. And um, I like to tell a little story from a comic strip that a friend actually gave to me as a young mother that helped me with my own children that are three, year apart, three years apart. I had a good friend that gave me a little um, comic strip to help me raise with my children when it came to sharing. And it's two little boys sitting in a sandbox. And the one says to the other, do you want to play with your trike? And in, he had, in the second scene, he replies and he says, only if you do. Now, how many of you have experienced that with your own children or grandchildren is, um, you know, a toy could be sitting there and nobody's played with it for days and then somebody goes to pick it up and that's my favorite toy. I was just going to play with it. Now, I want to describe what child development specialists or human development specialists call parallel play. And this is where children start out. Children play side by side. Think of your geometry, your math terms. Parallel is two lines that are side by side, but they never intersect. And that's how children start out by playing. In the house scene, we had 
four different pl people playing, but the mother was doing something. The little sister was playing with the doll. The brother was playing with the cars and the dad was playing like he was a dog. But they each had a particular role. And when you watch young children, if you ever go into a preschool or a nursery setting, you'll probably see that they're playing side by side, but they're very individual in their activities. That's normal. So all of you can do a big sigh of relief and go, oh, my kids are not bad children. They just need to learn to share. As they get older, they actually start to interact more. And I like to say um, that there's a lot of crashes happening. And as parents and grandparents, you probably feel like you're doing a lot of refereeing and a lot of, well, this is what we do. It takes practice. One of child's work, one of the areas of child's work is learning how to share. Remember where your children are. If they're under the age of about five, they're still probably in that parallel play section. And as they get older, then they learn to interact. And how many of you um, remember games where you've played with a child that they don't like your rules and so they all start to change it? I know one example in our house that um, we probably should have thought a little more in advance of is my husband and I would play children's games with my daughter and we'd let her win. <laughs> and then she would go to the neighbor's house and come home crying a lot as, I always win at home, I don't there. And you know, we didn't let her learn those consequences of you know having to lose and what it's like to lose. And so it does take a lot of work as a child plays. Um, in the next couple minutes, we're going to talk about each area of development and how play actually helps a child advance. And you can see how um, play is really a child's work, and it's what they should be doing as they're growing up. As we talk about child development and play, what we're going to do now is practice the learning triangle. And we've talked about this quite a bit in other workshops where we view a clip, we review the concept with the book, and then we do an activity. And all of the clips that we're going to watch today from PBS are actually going to have a tool that we used from play that will help children in its play in their play. And so the first one we're going to talk about is imagination. We talked a little bit about that as we were using the tools, but that's something that I think that as parents we sometimes move away from. That as a child imagines, it's not that big of a deal. It's very, very important. Um, as a mother of four children, I have found myself that, um, that I always want to buy my children props or things. I'll go to a toy store and think, oh, this would be fun. Oh, this would be fun. Oh, this would be fun. Where sometimes a box and a stick would be better for a child. Don't always give your kids all those props. Let them imagine. Let them pretend. Remember that imagination leads to good problem solving as adults. One of my favorite books for all ages, even adults, is It Looked Like Spilt Milk. Um, the colors are just, there's just two colors in this book, so it's very appropriate for a very, very young child. And it's also a great book for children that are just learning to read or to memorize a book because after the second page, they can read it with you as you will be doing with me. Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. Sometimes it looked like a rabbit, rabbit but it wasn't a rabbit. <gasps> Sometimes it looked like a bird, but it wasn't a bird either. Oh, sometimes it looked like a tree. tree. That looks sort of like an apple tree, but it wasn't a tree or an apple tree. <gasps> Here's my favorite. Sometimes it looked like a ice cream. Ice cream. Oh. Mary, what would your favorite toppings be? Mm. Caramel. Caramel, okay. Ugh, ice cream, that sounds really good, but it wasn't ice cream, nor with caramel on it. This one's a hard one. Sometimes it looked like a flower. Some of you may have read this book. It doesn't really look like my kind of flower, but it wasn't a flower or that, I don't know what that looks like. <gasps> Sometimes it looked like a pig. pig, but it wasn't a pig. <gasps> Sometimes it looked like a birthday, birthday cake. cake, but it wasn't a birthday cake. Oh, tell me what this one says. Sometimes it looked like a sheep. What does a sheep say? But it wasn't. 
<laughs> sometimes, here's another hard one, sometimes it looked like a great horned owl. Mary can read the words, but it wasn't. <laughs> sometimes it looked like a mitten, but it wasn't a warm, cozy mitten. <gasps> sometimes it looked like a squirrel, but it wasn't a squirrel. Oh, this is you guys. Sometimes it looked like a angel, beautiful angel, but it wasn't. Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. It was just a cloud in the sky. Okay, what would be the best activity you could do with this book? Go outside and look at the clouds. The activity we're going to do is with your packing peanuts. Now, each of you have a colored piece of paper right in the book. And what I want you to do is take that out. Now, in front of you, you have some biodegradable packing peanuts. And the great thing about these is you don't need glue to make them stick. All you do is, now, can I use your paper? Yes, please. Okay. Is you take them, you lick them, and you stick them, and they stick right there. Now, f something that's sort of fun for discovery to look at is if you put this in water, they would actually dissolve. They're make it out of, I think, baking soda, so they actually dissolve, so they're eco or, fan or the earth friendly. So what I want you to do, and I will give Pam a different piece of paper, is I want you to actually make your own page of it look like spilt milk. Make your own shape. Make your own, just use your imagination and create a page for it looked like spilt milk. I know some people will take and make three dimensionals, make them stick up. If your child ate these, it would not harm them. As you're finishing up, I just want to take a few of them and show each other what we have here. Now this one caused our imaginations to go, and I imagined a Christmas tree, but when Barbara told me what it was, I could see it was a waterfall. A waterfall. Very, very nice. Okay. So an errands is a little car. A little car. Okay. Very easy, isn't it? And your kids will have fun. You can actually, I've actually gone to preschools and um, presented this and they've actually had their own children do a whole series and then they read this as a book with their names on it. So they get to write what it is. Do it with your own children. They'll love it. Um, send a book to grandma. See if she can figure out what it is. Um, Imagination is a great reasoning skill. And we also did a physical activity with our fine motor skills as we did this. We're going to now talk about other areas of development and how play helps in all areas of development. As we talk about social and emotional development in play, most of you have seen social emotional development going on where children actually don't agree or they have to learn to get along. And that is one thing that a lot of times, unless you know there's a whole uh, really bad contention, let children try to work things out between themselves. The one thing that I'm gonna focus on though is more about the emotional part of play. Each of us are very different. Sometimes we've taken our children to something that we think, oh, this is going to be the most, the best thing in the world for them, and they don't like it because of their personalities. And so you need to look at each individual child and match their activities with their personality, what they like, what they don't like. One of my favorite books, but this is a very enjoyable book about being different, but that aren't we glad that there's differences and there's lots of activities for your children to do that we don't all have to be um, like sports stars. There's a lot of different ways to enjoy our talents. Two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. Two eyes and nose and a mouth are the first things that we see on millions and millions of faces from Tibet to Tennessee. Some eyes are shaped like almonds and some are big and round. And what about those eyebrows? Why, all kinds can be found. Noses can be short and wide or turned up long and bumpy. Some are small and curved up and some are kind of lumpy. 
When it comes to mouths, it's plain to see the variety is just fine. Some have lips that are full and broad while others are thin as a line. Isn't it amazing how changing just a feature or two makes millions and millions of faces, yet no one looks just like you. How, imagine how dull the world would be if everyone looked like you or me. Over and over we'd see the same face till we wish for another to take its place. How lucky we are the world isn't that way. Our differences make us special, wouldn't you say? And right here in the back of the book is a place that you can put a picture of your child. And I would encourage you to put what makes them special. It's not just their physical features, it is what their talents are. Um, I want to show another activity that we have for you to maybe as a parent help you see where your child is and what their talents are. In your book again, now this is something you're going to be putting together, you've got two hands. And in it, you have a little booklet. And um, with your children, you can put, I like, I can, I, um, I can count, different things that they can do. So that you'll see where your child's talents or where their likes or dislikes are so you can plan appropriate activities. One of the best things about play is seeing individuals with their different activities and how that really does relate to their emotional development. When you encourage them to do activities that make them maybe different from you, but also different from their brothers and sisters. So as you watch your children in their play and their activities, make sure you match their personalities with the activities that you're providing for them. Our last area of development we're going to talk about is physical, which, you know, seems pretty hand in hand with play for most children. Although some of you might have children like mine that has a personality to sort of sit still and not really get up and be physical. In fact, I have to encourage her to go outside. I have to encourage her to ride her bike. Where I had one child that I would have to go find in the neighborhood because he never slowed down. And so once again, depending on what their personality, depending on what their temperament is, we might need to encourage them. And with my son though, it was always nice. I knew where he was. I knew that he was outside being very physical and playing. Um, as we talk about um, physical activity, remember that when we get up, when we move, it makes us happy. One thing that we have really tried to encourage in this generation of children is to be more physical. As we've talked in a previous workshop, and as I'll probably stress in others, is that our children have the unfortunate um, uh, illness of obesity. And unfortunately, it has become a national crisis that children are um, having obesity-related diseases. In one study that I read in one particular group of people is they were, because of their obesity, they were actually be having cirrhosis of the liver. How do we usually incur cirrhosis of the liver? Does anyone know what that disease, um, Pam? Liquor is from alcoholism, but because of obesity, the Hispanic males in their 20s are becoming to have that disease. There's a lot of side effects from, over, from overweight children. And so we want to encourage that all children get up and move at least 20 minutes a day. As I've said, it's something that in my house, I have to encourage. Some of you have children that you wish that maybe sat down and was quiet. But with those children, realize how, how well that is for their bodies. Don't be embarrassed to get up and move with your kids. They might be embarrassed for you, but they'll still have fun. Um, there's a lot of books that have different um, topics of physical um, um, and the need to move. I'm not gonna read this one today because it is very long, but the Skippy John Jones series talks about a little boy that's sent to his bedroom and he's supposed to sit down and think about what he was supposed to do right. And instead he bounces and bounces and bounces on his big boy bed and he creates a whole scenario of what's going on inside. Um, one thing that I have learned as a parent is that 
children cannot control their emotions unless they control their physical bodies. And usually for ch children to work out their angry feelings or the emotional stress they feel in their life, it has to be a physical release. So as you're doing, um, when your child is misbehaving, sometimes it's a good idea to get them up and moving. Um, the last book that I'm going to read in this particular workshop is as quick, quick as a cricket. And there's a lot of things this child is doing with his body. Um, this book is written by Audrey Wood and illustrated by Don Wood. I'm as quick as a cricket. I'm as slow as a snail. I'm as small as an ant. I'm as large as a whale. I'm as sad as a basset. I'm as happy as a lark. I'm as nice as a bunny. I'm as mean as a shark. I'm as a cold as a toad. I'm as hot as a fox. I'm as weak as a kitten. I'm as strong as an ox. I'm as loud as a lion and as quiet as a clam. I'm as tough as a rhino and as gentle as a lamb. I'm as brave as a tiger and as shy as a shrimp. I'm as tame as a poodle and as wild as a chimp. I'm as lazy as a lizard and as busy as a bee. Put it all together and you've got me. And when children play, they do come all together with their cognitive and reasoning skills, their social and emotional skills, and especially their physical skills. Don't leave play out of your children's life. Make sure they have at least 20 minutes because remember, play is a child's work. Thank you.